Rated M for Mature. It was wonderful for Rebellion to ask if they could come over and photograph some of the authentic weapons and vehicles that we've got. I was quite amazed at how this works because for each item they would take three or four hundred photographs to make sure it was absolutely perfect. We've done German half tracks, German tanks, all kinds of artillery pieces. The one part we did a Kattenkrad. Kattenkrad is a tracked vehicle. It's like a motorbike with tracks on. This particular Kattenkrad was in the film Saving Private Ryan. And a lot of people might remember it's the one where it nearly topples over, it goes around the corner. I nearly had a heart attack that day, but that's another thing. It's all about getting the detail of the items so it looks 100% authentic on this fantastic video game. It's very important to us in all of our games that guns sound as realistic as possible. Our artists go to great lengths to visually represent the guns. Of course, we apply the same rigorous, uncompromising approach to the sound. We're really going all out on Sniper Elite 5. We're recording more guns than all of our previous sniper titles combined. We all know Carl likes to sneak around, stealthily picking off the enemy with his silenced pistol. So it's a no-brainer really for us to get the well rod into the game and we're really happy with how it's sounding. And it's great to have that level of detail for one of our signature weapons. So we're really going for authenticity. Sniper Elite is a very cinematic sounding game. So when you hear a rifle in Sniper, we want it to sound big, we want it to sound exciting, but we also want it to be based in realism. We're going to be setting the microphones up at various points downrange from the guns so that we can get a number of different perspectives. So we'll be recording up close, we're going to be recording far away. Close recordings will give us some nice mechanical detail. And the distant recordings that we can use for distant gunshots in the game. So the most exciting gun for me to capture is probably the Thompson. It's a gun that has a lot of history. Hearing all of the mechanical parts moving, recording every single element of it, and the firing itself was just really fun. The great thing about SE5 is there's so much customization in there and so many different varieties of weapons that you can replay missions and with different weapons will really give you a different experience. I've kind of gone to town um, from front to back, you know, stock, magazines, receivers, through to barrels, scopes, iron sights. There's, there's a lot in there. They all exist within the world in workbenches and these will be located in strategic locations or hidden away in a sort of back room in what we call armories or resistance caches. This allows the players to change their playstyle in real time without having to go back to the front end or committing to a loadout from the start of a mission. So in SE5 we've added the ability to look down iron sights, which takes you more into a more immersive first person style view. There's four main archetypes of how you can play Sniper Elite. Stealth, we've got power, we've got speed. And we've got control, and control might be like you sit back on a hill 600 meters away and snipe out your targets carefully. Or you might run and gun and you take in the big gun, loud, and you just lay down fire. What we wanted to do is set up a loadout system, weapons, equipment, items, that let you play in the way that you want to play. Working with partners such as the Imperial War Museum and Royal Armouries gives us a level of authenticity that helps us elevate the game and add historical accuracy as well. We try to encourage more focus on thinking and planning, which is really what underpins the Sniper Elite experience. We changed the default loadout so that the pistol for SE5 encouraged players to play with a different playstyle in SE4 and explore all of the attachment and customization options we have available in SE5.